I, I went outside and I saw the gaping hole and the fire and the smoke and the flames. And it was like, okay, you know, just it was like looking at a billboard. When the first plane hit, I ran into the television studio and I grabbed a camera. I want somebody who's going to put the camera in somebody's face. I want, you know, I want this close up. I want good footage. I saw Evan and I said, you know, this is the guy. And as I was passing him, he just looked up from his knees like, a, you know, like, a, like an angel of mercy or something, or, or, or a, a sergeant uh, giving an infantryman a, another option of a piece of artillery to take into battle. And he just kind of looked up literally from his knees and said, here, do you want this? There really wasn't a plan, just, just to kind of get out there and, and s scout what was happening. And I went out onto the bridge between the church and the building and looked north and, and my first shot was pretty much just zooming all the way to the north. And then I looked over and saw that there was a, a guy kind of nonchalantly leaning on the hood of his car and listening to a radio. And then realized what the shot really needed to tell the story was to put the trade center, the smoking trade center, in the middle of the shot. And as far as I knew, I was taking an aftermath shot. Essentially, as soon as I got my shot, I saw a white flash come in from the left side of the frame. And I said, what is that? When I saw Building 2 start to come down and I realized that my chances of surviving were mathematically zero, I just turned and ran and, and somehow kept the camera rolling and just kind of put the camera over my shoulder and ran the other way. And I think I was very fortunate not to see what was happening behind me. Huddled in that corner with my wife and child was the moment where I thought, this is, this is the end. This is very likely the end.